3017. It was the year of the septicentennial of the founding of the Federated Sons. For exactly 700 years, House Davian had ruled this portion of the Inner Sphere. Harris Reagan's father was a colonel of an elite force in the powerful Davian army, but the army of Hans Davian was not on the planet of Redondo that fateful night of January 12th. Colonel Joseph T. Reagan was an idol to his son. He was the best mech warrior and the best force in the army of the best of the successor houses. But there was more to the man than the boy knew. The colonel had been working to infiltrate and destroy the renegade mercenary cartel called the Darkwing Lance, and he'd learned entirely too much. Somehow the location of his residence had leaked to the Darkwing Lance, and a plan was drawn up for a covert hit operation. Before taking action, the members made a pact. Immediately after the hit, they would disband and lay low for ten years, maintaining a code of strict secrecy before regrouping to again undertake their nefarious enterprise. Under cover of night, the lambs attacked. While playing at a friend's home, young Harris heard the sounds of the firing. Rushing home, he found a roaring inferno where he and his mother and father and sister had lived and eaten and laughed and cried together. Orphaned at the age of 12, he vowed that someday he would have revenge on those who had done this. It is now 3027. The outrage and shock that echoed through every home in the Federated Sons has long since died down, but it lives on in the heart of Harris Reagan, now a young man. After he saw what happened to his family, Harris could not serve the House of Davian. Now he makes his living, one day at a time, at a freelance mech warrior, selling his services not to the highest bidder, but to anyone whose contract might lead him closer to the yet insidious Darkwing Lance. Harris has tirelessly and obsessively chased down every rumor about the Darkwing Lance. This quest has led him here, to the planet Galatea, where mercenary mech warriors and the dregs of the Inner Sphere gather. But we don't need to tell you this, for you are Harris Reagan. Hello everyone, welcome back for more Let's Play Mech War for the Super Nintendo. Yeah, that is the story you get going in here. And we have more practice mission going on. Let's go ahead and stop that now that we now that I actually am going to take control here and start the game. Ah, it has taken me ten years to develop and refine my skills to the point where I am now ready to face the Darkwing Lance, that renegade mercenary cartel that destroyed my family all those years ago. And here we have the central hub of the game, with the four major icons there. The one on the far left, the staticky one, will be our intermission button, when we have a mission to enter. The one we are on now is the bar, so we will take a look in here. And there are four things here. Two of them will become available to us as people want to talk to us. The other two available to us now, one, the bartender, who is Searle, and says if we won't work, there's some jobs on Galeton, and if you want to talk to someone, feel free to drop by any time. And if, any, and if we hear anyone drop planet names, like Galeton, remember them and select a contract with that same planet name at Guild Headquarters. It's sure to lead us to more information. And remember, don't rush straight ahead to fight there yet. You should go to the mech complex and upgrade your armor or weapon systems. Homing missiles are best. At times, they are, yes. But they're limited ammo. You want lasers and particle cannons. We will get to that in a second. We also have the news net. It is January 4th, 3027. The renegade mercenaries know the Darkwing Lance have been declared outlaws. Anyone with information should report it immediately. And Prince Hans Davian presented Lieutenant Andrew Redburn with the Silver Sunburst for his actions in the Kittery Ambush. So yeah, basically a universe of war, 
we're going to be piloting a big walking tank. Other people are going to be piloting big walking tanks. We're going to shoot at each other and hope that we are the ones still standing after it all. Guild headquarters is where we go to select missions. We will go there last as we need to go to the hangar bay here first. Or they called it the mech complex. I always call it the hangar bay. First things first. We select the wrench icon on this screen to repair and reload. You all, you start out the game a little bit low on missiles, always. Your little mech here is a little bitty light, fast, speedy, quick thing that generally gets to pepper larger mechs with small arms fire until, you know, they land a big hit that kills you, or the big mechs backing you up, you know, kill them. However, there are no big mechs backing you up, so you get to pepper things and hope you don't die in the process. But for now, let's go ahead and just reload. There's also a repair button there, but it doesn't show up because we're not damaged. Thankfully, this question mark icon here will take us into the screen where we can basically fit our mech with all new sorts of weapons and armors and heat sinks and jump jets and new engines. For example, this allows us to buy and sell the weapons we have attached to our mech and as far as I know you can have up to six weapons at any given time attached to any mech. Pretty versatile thing that. And the weapons you have available you have short range missiles, short range homing missiles, medium range missiles, medium range homing missiles, long range missiles, long range homing missiles, machine guns, small lasers, medium lasers, large lasers, and particle cannons. That's pretty much it. Obviously the missiles and machine guns have limited ammo and once you exhaust their supply during a mission they're no longer selectable but the lasers will produce more heat. Although they are infinite. Yeah, you'll never run out of laser ammo, you'll just overheat. Your armor increases the amount of punishment you can take, obviously. Heat sinks allow you to fire off more weapons faster, run, maneuver, and use jump jets for longer before your mech starts to overheat and take damage. And in some cases, basically shut down until the heat level goes away. Engines basically allows you to move faster. You notice we already have something that allows us to go, you know, 125, so we don't need that. But we can eventually start making, getting better and better engines if we want to spend the money on that. And then jump jets allow you to fly, basically. Or more likely, hover. But, you know, fly is good. Being able to get off the ground, being able to leapfrog over lava pits and such like that, not a bad thing. Plus, you'll also notice that sometimes it takes opponents a little while to react to you if you uh, jump, keep jumping up in the air. It makes it harder for them to actually hit you. But we really don't have the money to spend on that. I need to save up my money and get some medium range homing missiles here, which I should be able to do now. Just barely. I've barely got exactly enough. There we go. Now I have medium range homing missiles, but I have absolutely no money left in the bank. This right here is a buy, obviously, but this allows you to buy new mechs. Ah, uh, that's a pretty mech, isn't it? Basically starts out with twin particle cannons and a machine gun. We would retrofit that thing with missiles. That's basically what we already have. Maybe a little faster version. Slightly different. Not a lot of variety here, is there? Now these rotate in and out. There's one that's absolutely massive. That kind of puts that thing to shame, really. We will see it eventually. And it starts off with like five weapons sitting on it. But that's all we can do here for now. If we had a spare mech, the far right button would be lit up with a cell. 
but we do not. We just have our one starter mech. And now it's time to start looking through here and seeing if we can find a few missions that we would like to take. Now you remember the barkeep said something about Galeton being where we need to find work. Well, there's the mission with Galeton in it, and it's worth 92,000 sea bills. Not a bad price, but we need some more money before we do that. Even if this is only going to have two light mechs in it to start out with. What else? We got right duty there, garrison duty there, right duty there, back to there. What's the highest paying gig here? That. We need to score some cheap money. We need to score some easy money so I can get some better weapons and armor and all that. So let's go ahead. I'm going to show you this garrison duty. It says in it basically I have the same two light mechs with Earth type. It's an Earth type planet with 49 degree temperature and 1.6 gravity. So nothing too extreme there. A little cooler than normal. Good for us, good for the other mechs, which is bad for us, but hey. And the buttons here info does exactly what I just did. This button will allow you to save your game. This is your negotiation button, and these buttons, left and right, cycle you through the four or five available missions. Let's see if we can get them to pay a little bit more, huh? And they have taken my offer of 114000 It's generally not a very wise idea to pump that up to astronomical levels because you do that and you start to get a reputation for being greedy and they may start lowering you, etc, etc, etc. Or so said the manual long ago, forever ago. But before we call this video, and I know it's been basically just me explaining everything in the world, but that's basically all the explaining I'm really going to have to do for the entire game. Everything else just plays out through the story. But yeah. Basically, we have I've shown you everything in the menu that you have available to you at the beginning of the game now. So let's actually go select this mission, we pick it, we say yes, we will take on your mission. And suddenly the skull and crossbones lights up there. So we have some small lasers and some homing missiles. Notice we're on a small little cluster of islands in the middle of a sea. Now we just have to wait. I'm going to do this and run away so I can explain a few things. The far left is obviously the radar. Next to that is the picture of my mech. Also the little heat meter there that's not going to go up while I'm standing in the water. Next to that weapons, I can cycle through which one I want to fire presently. Although if I hold down the buttons, it'll cycle through everything on my list. And you notice as I fire my lasers, it's slow, it's, you know, briefly increasing my heat there. And status on the right is the enemy mech that I'm facing there. I just fired missiles at him and pretty much KO'd him in one hit. Well, six hits anyway. So yeah, that's combat fast and furious. And early on, you fire off about six missiles and it'll take out these light mechs. Five, six missiles, not a bad, not bad for that. And I walk away 114,000 sea bills richer for it. And because I stayed well out of enemy range, I took absolutely no damage whatsoever. So, first thing we always do, we reload. 
And then I forgot the price of bigger, more powerful lasers. Under 5,000, I can afford some particle cannon. And I'm going to. Particle cannons have range like you wouldn't believe. So now, I am going to call this a video, and when we come back, you're going to see me fight a whole lot. Try to get some money, and if nothing interesting happens whatsoever story-wise, I probably won't show off all the combat between now and Galeton. But I'm definitely going to need to grind some money on the various missions in this game. Just to be able to, you know, have... Just to be able to eventually afford that really nice mech. Speaking of... I wonder if it's shown up yet. No. No, it hasn't. It will eventually. But for now... Since I didn't take that gig on Galeton, and that gig on Galeton will be there until we take it, but others will cycle in and out. This guy is going to say the exact same thing. So will the news net. Let's see. Garrison, Diancador, Quilin, Galeton, and Zada. Those are the ones we need. Or, well, the one we will eventually get to advance the plot will be that one. And it is now January 5th, 3027, since we spent today fighting. So. With all of that out of the way, and a whole bunch of much more lengthy exposition than I really wanted to get into. Sorry for that, folks, but... It gets us set up for the rest of the game where I don't have to spend a ton of time explaining things that I can jump right into combat. Anyway, take care for now, folks, and I will see you back next time as we actually start to make our living as a mech warrior. Yeah. So, take care, folks. See you later.